Sign Machine is a great Unity tool with which you can easily create the perfect character controllers for your games. But did you know that you can create awesome cutscenes for your games or whole movies with it as well? In this tutorial, I will cover how we can apply different post-processing effects to the cameras. I will also teach you about the tracked dolly camera, which goes really well together with the timeline. In the timeline, we can switch between cameras, animate them and add blending or fading out transitions. I'm in the same project where we left off in the last tutorial, so if you are new to Sign Machine, I would really recommend you to watch it. The great thing about using post-processing with Sign Machine is that we can add different post-processing effects to different cameras. I will start with the first person camera that I have. To add the post-processing to it, go to the Sign Machine Virtual Camera component and we can just add extension. There is quite a lot of them, but the two we are interested in right now is the Sign Machine Post Processing and Sign Machine Volume Settings. If you are using the URP or the HDRP render pipeline, then you should go with the volume. But if you are using just the built-in pipeline, you need to go with the post processing. And if you are unsure whether you are using URP, HDRP or the built-in pipeline, you can just go to Edit, Project Settings, go to the Graphics tab, and here you can see whether you are using some scriptable render pipeline, so yes, I'm using the URP. In this case, I will add extension and that will be the volume settings. This will add new component where we just need to create the profile. This is going to store an asset somewhere in our project. And here we can just add the overrides, which are the effects we want to apply to this camera. I have added those two post-processing effects to the first person camera and we can do the same for the aiming camera. So I have added different post-processing effects to this camera as well and as we are playing the game and we try aiming, you see that it is switching between those two cameras and it is blending the post-processing effects as well. So when we are starting aiming, it is all smooth, but when we go back from the aiming, we can set it kind of cuts a bit, which is because of the settings that we configured in the sign machine brain, as here I have specified the style as hard out, so all of this is affecting the post-processing as well. Let's say that you would want to create a third camera and on it you would want to have the same effects as you have on the first person camera and on the aiming camera we may want to have the same effects as well because here we have just some depth of field and bloom which could be applied really to all of the cameras. So to add some global post processing that will be applied over all of the cameras we can just right click in the hierarchy, go to the volume and add the global volume where we can add effects that should be applied over all of the cameras so if I want to do some color adjustments that should be applied to all of the cameras, I can just edit here. And now if I change, let's say the contrast, we can see that it is changing in the aiming camera. And if I switch it to the first person camera, yep, here it has changed as well. But the global volume we have created is not going to override the effects on the sign machine cameras. So the aiming camera will still have the vignette and the chromatic aberration. In the Sign Machine volume settings, you may have noticed that we can set some focus tracking, which will be changing the focus offset, and this can be used really well with the depth of field that we have. What I found out is that it works the best with the bokeh type of the depth of field, because here you can see that we have the focus distance, which then can be changed by the focus tracking that we set. So this can be used in a case where you have the camera that's constantly looking at the player, the player maybe can walk around, and the distance of the player is changing relative to the camera. In that case, we may also want to blur the background, but as the player is moving, we cannot really set the blur just to a specific distance because the player is just moving, so that's for what we can use the focus tracking. So we can say that we should be tracking maybe the follow target. And one more thing, if you are using the focus tracking, then do not forget to set the follow target back in the sign machine virtual camera. So now I'm going to move the first person camera out of the character controller so it's not moving with it and I will make it look at the player. Now the background is not blurry at all so let's play with the focal length. So now as I'm with the player in the background we can see the foreground is blurred and as I slowly move into the foreground we will see that all of the objects in the background will be blurred because it is trying to track the player. But the tracking can be used with other post processing effects as well. That's enough about post-processing, now let's take a look at creating some amazing cutscenes. The essential thing we need to know about is the tracked dolly cam, which will allow us to move the camera along a designated path. So as we get in the game, I may want to move the camera around the player like this, then make it look at the player, 
then we may want to show a bit of the map so the player knows where he's going and so on. To use the track dolly camera, we can go again to the sign machine virtual camera, to the body options and select the track dolly. Now we need to specify a path for it, so I will create empty object that will be representing the path and if we do add component, search for the sign machine, we see that there are two components that will help us to create some paths, the sign machine smooth path and sign machine path. So let's start with the smooth path. So we can see it created this green path like so, we can move with the whole path and we can adjust the individual points that we have on it. We can also add multiple waypoints and you can see the path is curving nicely. We can also change resolution of the path and decide whether it should be looping along the path or not. So this move path is really simple. Now let's take a look at the classic path that we have here, which just adds us a bit more control over the path. So now, even though we have just two waypoints, you can see there are three points. One of them is for moving the whole path, another one for moving the point of the path, and the last one is for changing the curvature of the path. So with this one, we can really play with it and make it turn around as we want. Okay, now we have a nice path for the camera like so. So I will select the cinematic camera I have created, set the path, so just drag the camera path object. Now as we change the path position, the camera is going to move along the path. You can see the value is between 0 and 1, so 1 is the second waypoint and 0 is the first one. So if we try moving the camera, we can see it's not really looking at the player, which is a simple issue to fix. So we can just go to the aiming and set the composer. Now as we move along the path, yep, it's always looking at the player. As we play the game, we can see nothing is happening, the camera is not moving. So either we could change the path position through a script or we can do it through timeline. And in the track dolly camera, there is one more option, which is the auto dolly. And if we enable it, it will just be looking at the player and trying to follow it along the path we specified. But for now, let's keep it disabled and get straight to the timeline. And if you want to learn how to use timeline in general, you can also check one of my tutorials. I will create an empty object for the timeline, then we will go to the window, sequencing and open the timeline window. Select the timeline object and hit create. This edits the playable director component, where we can decide whether it should play on a wake or we can just play it through script and down at the bottom we can see the timeline itself. In the timeline, we can decide which cameras should be active at which point. So for this, click the plus icon and add the sign machine track. Here we can drag in the sign machine brain, so as the sign machine camera. And then we can drag in the individual virtual cameras we want to activate. So I will start with the cinematic camera, which is looking around the player. We can change for how long it should be active and later we'll be adding some blending. Now let's take a look at the track dolly that we have. So as I said, through the animation, we can be just changing the path variable that we have in the cinematic camera. To do that, we'll jump to the timeline, so make sure you have selected the timeline object. We'll take the cinematic camera, drag it into this window, and it will allow us to add the animation track. This will add an animator to the camera, and here we have the little record button, so I will start recording. I will select the camera I want to adjust, and from start, the path position should be 0. And at the end, so on 4 seconds, I will set the path position to 1. I will end the recording. Now you see that we have those two keyframes here, which means that it is recorded correctly. So now as we go over the timeline, we can see that it's correctly changing the path position value. Yep, this looks pretty good. We can see that there is already some smoothing applied to it. And if you would want to adjust the speed of the animation or the smoothing we have, you can just right click on the animation track, hit edit in animation window, and here you can go into the curves tab, which is down here. And now we can see the actual curves as for how the animation looks. So we can just play around with these. To make the cutscene a bit less boring, I have added three new cameras, where one of them is just for following the player, to which we'll switch when we actually want to let the player play the game. Then we have the first camera we created, which is just for looking around the player. We have the second one, which is just an overview of the map. And the third one, which looks pretty similar, again, it is just an overview of the map. So select the timeline object, and now we can decide how we want to switch between those different cameras. So first, we have the look around the player, then I want to show the overview of the map, 
So that's the camera one, I can just easily drag it in. Maybe make this one a bit shorter. I will add the overview second one that we have. Drag it in. And now as we go over the timeline, first we have the look around, then we have overview one and overview two. And lastly, we can just let the player play the game. So I will assign the follow cam. Yep, we have the look around. This camera, which is not moving at all. This one. And lastly, we should be able to actually play the game. So we have the player follow cam. So now we have just hard cut transitions. A simple way to add some transitions is just to drag the animations over each other. So let's say I want to blend in those two. Maybe also blend this one. So now if we try it, this is a hard cut. And this one will actually try to blend the position to the second camera, which in this case doesn't look bad. And for the third camera, again, it's going to do the same thing. So we have the hard cut, then we have the blending one and blending two. This doesn't look necessarily right. In this case, I would maybe like some fading out animation. The fading out of the cameras is not really a built-in feature, but there is a really simple way to set it up. So I will create new camera, which will be just for the blending. So we have the fade out camera. To this one, I will add extension. This time it is the sign machine storyboard. This is something like a canvas, so we can just display something on the screen. So I will just select some kind of black texture. We can see that it is not really fitting right. So let's adjust the aspect to stretch it to fit. So this camera, we just sees the black screen. With this one, we'll blend between this and the other cameras we want. But then it would also blend the position of the cameras, which we don't want. So for this, we can just mute the camera. So as it is saying, if we check it, the camera transform will not be controlled by this virtual camera. And now, finally, if we get to the timeline, we can use the fade out camera we have just created. So I will drag it in. I will make it quite short as the fading out doesn't have to be long. I will now drag it over some of the other animations that I want to fade out. So let's do this one and I will also do this one. And now, as we are blending between those two cameras, you can see this fading out, fading in. Then we have the hard cut and then again we have the fade out and fade in. Here we can see the final cutscene which took us just a few minutes to create and I would say that it looks pretty good. And now we can play as usual. There is still much more stuff we can do with the timeline. We can animate other objects, animate characters, maybe display some text over the screen and really do anything you can imagine. So if you want to learn more about timeline, I would suggest you to check my tutorial about it. So now you know how to add post-processing effects to different cameras, how we can create the track dolly camera to create some nice cutscenes, and overall how to put it all together in the timeline, create some transitions, blending, and so on. If you are looking for some game developer friends or just seeking help, feel free to take a look at our Discord server. If you want to support me financially, take a look at my Patreon, where I will be releasing more special videos for you. I hope that this video was useful, if you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!